What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. We're going to be taking a look at a prototype. Let's get into it. All right, what are we doing today? We are checking out a prototype from a maker that I've actually never gotten the opportunity to review before. This one is coming from Knife Standards and it is the RR3. This one here coming from Knife Standards for me to check out. It is a prototype, so we're going to be a little limited on some of the stuff that we would usually check on here. And I'll make sure that I cover all the details that he included with this particular review sample. Um, so I just wanted to kind of jump into this first and foremost. I, I really like this design. I know what a lot of you are going to probably be thinking when you first see this, but keep in mind the theme with the Knife Standards RR line are the that it's dedicated to his father who really liked train and train cars. So when you take into account that the aesthetic is supposed to emulate a train car, you can really see that in the boxier design. And then I think even with the inlay here, I don't know if that was intended, but kind of looking like the windows on the side of the train car here, I really like that. And then it does have like this industrial look to it, that very, uh, po semi-polished or satin-ish finish on there kind of resembling what you would envision being on a train car. So I really do like that. And that does go a long way with me as far as the theme to me. It's not that I'm looking at just a very neutral, uh, very basic handle. To me, I am actually seeing the intended desi design with the train and train car here specifically. This also is going to be the first version of this knife made, or the first knife, I apologize, not version of this knife, the first knife that he has done that is not a frame lock or a bolster lock, but rather a nested liner lock version. So this particular one here has steel liners on both sides. They are milled for weight, weight reduction here. So you'll be able to see the weight reduction here real heavy on the show side. And then you got a little bit of weight reduction. If I can get the good angle here, let me see. Hopefully you can see that. You can see that there's one big relief pocket in the back. And then on the top, there's a bunch of little weight relief pockets to help kind of cut down on the weight of this knife. And just because I forgot to do that a minute ago, here's the information. If you're interested in checking out Knife Standards, uh, YouTube, where to acquire, and the Instagram information, all right there. If you're on a PC or a tablet, you can use your phone to kind of scan that and go over and check it out. So let me go ahead and run down through the specs really quick. We're going to do it a little bit differently. While you're taking a look at the knife on some B-roll footage, I am going to go ahead and run through very quickly. And again, this is the prototype, so I don't know that this is necessarily the steel this is made out of. And again, that is the reason why we're not going to be doing any cutting with this. It would really be pointless because if it's like D2 or some uh, cheap steel that they used to do the prototyping, it's really not going to tell anybody. And I don't know that it's their best factory edge. I don't know that it's the right cutting geometry on the prototype. This, again, is to look at the design and the functionality and tweak all of that out. So what are you looking at? You're looking at the production version having Vanex Super Clean, heat treated at 60 to 61, full flat grind, stone washed blade finish. It'll have titanium handles with a stone milled handle. Okay, so it is stone. You'll have the thumb studs and front flipper for deployment. Internal milling, which we looked at a minute ago for weight reduction. It will have a captive pivot with the custom square pivot and the RR initials, as you see here. So that'll be there. All T8 hardware. It'll have a reversible pocket clip and it'll run on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent ball. 
The cutting edge is 2.9 should be 2.9 inches with a total blade length of 3.1 inches, blade thickness 0.11 inch or 3 millimeters, and it'll have a handle length of 4.2 inches. It'll have a height of 0.94 inches, width of 0.53 inches, so a little bit thicker, and that's to accommodate the nested liners, I'm sure, with an overall length of 7.2 four inches coming in at 4.3 ounces so that's all of your specs on there now let's talk about the knife itself i really do like the milling on here i think it's really pretty and i think it helps spruce up which what some might see as being a more simplistic design again emulating what a train car is going to look like is really hard to do on a knife design and i think he pulled it together nicely so you have a little bit of contouring through chamfering I know it's not a contoured scale, but you see it does emulate a contoured scale with the heavy chamfering here on the edges. So that does help with the ergonomics here. And then you have, again, the micro milling that is going on both ends of the flat piece as far as the grind. And then the chamfered edges have lines that, that point and meet in the middle here and then you got a beautiful inlay and i don't know and i apologize i didn't look it up but he may have just a all titanium version i would imagine that he does and then he has versions with the inlay i know for sure because i actually went ahead and pre-ordered this one because there's a lot of reasons that i'll talk about at the end as to why i did that and then you have a filler screw here kind of helping hold the scale down that's on top of the steel liner steel liner is secured by the pivot and the one standoff so a very super clean design here pocket clip lands right here on top of the inlay and what i would imagine is just going to be the straight up and down milling if it is if there is a raw titanium version which will help it go in and out of pocket i personally do not like wire pocket clips and that's going to be a preference if you prefer the wire pocket clips then you'll probably like this particular one one of the notes that he threw in here mentioned the fact that his mill titanium pocket clips that are on the rr station are interchangeable with this wire pocket clip so if you have that or if you would like to buy one if he's offering them separately you can go ahead and pick that up and you'll be able to swap it over if you don't like the wire pocket clips i know there's a lot of mixture out there as far as what people do prefer the wire pocket clip goes in and out of the pocket good um, it hides very well but for me i just don't like the fact that it moves so easily granted on the inlay version and probably even over the milling lines it may not mar the knife as much but i just don't like the way that it moves when you're holding it in the hand talking about in the hand it's very comfortable for me with so someone who has very large hands i get exactly four fingers on here putting my index finger in the very far forward part of the choil i probably would say i would have liked just a little bit more room here uh, if he could have made it a little bit shorter and elongated this and i'll show you one that i'm talking about specifically that does that but just taking it out and elongating it a little bit here would have been a little bit nicer for those of us with slightly larger hands that actually like to like to carry you know a smaller knife but very comfortable there's no hot spots i am feeling that wire pocket clip but i think the version that i went with has that mill titanium and that should alleviate that concern for me specifically it's not a hot spot it's really just that it pokes up instead of like on a spider co where it ramps back down um, i think these are a little bit more comfortable for me than these but i get it this catches the pocket uh, catch it catches more of the pocket and since it is shorter you probably want that ramp to land like that so it can catch and move up and you're not really catching the material underneath the pocket clip there access to the lock bar is pretty good i'm not too concerned about the lock up because it is a prototype so i just want to focus on lock engagement so depending on how you like to disengage your knife you can go through all of the methods that i'm familiar with and easily operate all of them i would say you know lock bar access is solid i wouldn't say it's the best and it is far from the worst um it is a little tight for me with my larger hands and again not having that elongated access there a little bit tight but it's not anything that would be a deal breaker for me 
thumb studs and thumb stud placement. I love these style thumb studs. I know they're probably just your basic plain Jane, nothing exciting, but these are the ones that function the best. They work really well. They're easy to get to. They work great for the reverse flick, and you have great access to both thanks to that wonderful chamfering that he has going from basically, I would say, a quarter of the blade here and probably two-thirds here. Not the blade, the um, handle. Sorry, I said the blade. The RR standards initials here that he has in the pivot and the squared off pivot is unique. And I like the fact that it's something that's a little bit different. And also, you are sure that this is always going to be perfectly lined up when you disassemble and reassemble the knife. So that does help from a maintenance standpoint. The front flipper jimping is okay. Thankfully, they went aggressive here, so it does catch the finger. I just, again, preference like the smaller, tighter jimping. And I would have loved if they could have put one more here on the very top. I don't know if they can ask for that at production, but you have these little tiny jumps here and i think if you could just add like one more on the top there it would ensure that you don't slip off if you accidentally go too high you would get a little bit of something extra to grip onto having said that if you're just mindful and of course if you handle the knife a bunch you'll probably be used to the fact that you kind of got to land right at this flat part here and for me, I'm able to actually easily actuate that. Um, I'm not going to talk about the detent on this one because he did mention that it is a little bit lighter than what he wanted. And that in the production version, he has asked that they strengthen that lock bar uh, or detent. I don't know that it's strengthening the lock bar, but strengthening the detent up to make it more snappy. The blade geometry, again, I can't really hit on that too much, but I love this blade shape. You got a straight back that leads into a very late drop point, and I think that makes for a very beautiful blade shape here. You got a what would what is going to be, or sounds like it's going to be a very thin geometry. It's going to be um, something that would move through the material or should move through the materials very well. It gets acute out towards the tip here, so it does have a nice pokey tip. And if that holds true, and this remains the case in production, you'll see that that is going to be a very pokey tip for your detail task and puncturing task when you actually get to the production sample. Jumping goes out to a nice point, not too far into the blade's path, but you get a little bit out here so that if you need any type of control out through the tip, you got that detail uh, covered right there. And then for me, pinch grip on this is really nice. I land on all the flat spots here, and then I'm able to articulate my finger out towards the tip, and I'm able to get down to that tip very nicely. So it's very comfortable. Now, I would use my, my side pinch grip here for tabletop but i'm able to because of the chamfering and the flat pieces here hold the knife very comfortable for that as well the action on here again it is a prototype but it is a very smooth action on this knife it is not a guillotine it's a nice controlled close meaning it's not going to fall on your thumbnail unless you're holding it too long. And even if you hold it too long, I have found the flat part of that blade stock here kind of lands on the meat of my thumb for me personally. So I'm able to kind of stop it there and then I can give it a couple of shakes to send it home. Very nice design. Let's do a couple size comparisons. I've moved these towards the end of the video and then we'll check the weight. I know it's a prototype, but we'll do that anyway. But let's do a couple size comparisons. Okay, so I have my Spyderco Para 3 lightweight on the table and my Spyderco Manix 2 lightweight on the table. And this is to show you that this is more comparable to the Spyderco Para 3 lightweight. So it is a smaller, more compact EDC. To me, it very much covers all of your needs in this size point meaning you can carry this out on a date it'd be a gents knife something very classy looking that you don't have to worry about that people are going to see it and think that it's kind of tactical um, it is a folding knife with a detent so flipping it open of course not as subdued of a reaction i think as you would see from like a slip joint but i think people would see this and know oh that's not really tactical but i think it's also interesting enough where it might warrant conversation of like that, that's a wild looking knife. What, what is that? So not as full sized as your Manix 2 Lightweight, but a very good size and very, very similar to your Pair 3 Lightweight. Let's do a couple more. 
All right, being that this is a knife that comes in at $350, I did want to do some premium knives that I have in my collection. So the Quiet Carry 9 comes in at $330 and I think goes toe for toe as far as size, styling, impressions. Um, well, not necessarily styling impressions, but more so what your what type of knife you're carrying just a very well-rounded edc type knife and then i wanted something a little bit more out there with my padre now the padre coming in at 299 is definitely a little bit less but i think as kunwu grows in popularity and they push to do things you see their prices creeping creeping up a little bit so a taiwan made knife magna cut uh, titanium with an inlay coming in at 330 and then the the designer knife here the rr3 coming from knife standards at 350 you're getting uh, again magna cut versus vanek super clean you're getting inlays tons of milling and you're getting captive pivots you're getting a reversible pocket clip on the rr standard whereas you are not getting that with the nine the nine chose to make it right hand uh, specific. I did forget to mention earlier, this is being manufactured by Best Tech. I think Best Tech is probably one of the more pricier OEs, but they can charge that because I think they're also one of the fastest OEs to production in most cases. Whereas like a Rayot knife, you may be six months to a year from what I understand for a designer knife. I think Best Tech is more in like that three to six month range. Let's do some profile comparisons. Then we'll check the weight on this prototype just for the fun of it. All right, so I think this is where the RR3 really comes into its own because when you have it folded up in the pocket, it is taking up absolutely the least amount of space out of everything you see on the table that I have. And I consider the 9 to be one of those more, you know, all well-rounded uh, EDC carries that's very compact but very hand filling so I do like that one of the party tricks here of it being you know a little bit more narrow than the nine is the fact that it has these th uh, slightly thicker scales with the heavy chamfering on there so you can see here that when you compare the two of them the nine contoured but a little bit thinner and then with the internal nested liners it needs to be made a little bit thicker but that heavy heavy chamfering here giving it that really hand filling so a little bit more narrow but a little bit thicker so what i'm trying to say is when you get it into the hand it's very very comfortable let's grab the scale just check the weight out really quick for me all right, prototype coming in at exactly what it's saying here. Actually, a little bit lighter. It's saying 4.3 at production. It came in at 4.2, so another reason why I am emphasizing this is a prototype. All right, what are my thoughts and impressions? We're going to be introducing a new element here on my channel. I'm actually going to start giving physical scores at the end of all the reviews. What will go into those factors are going to be ergos, lock bar access, blade geometry and cutting performance, and overall usability as far as positions that you can use the knife in, and the action of the knife will all be factors that I take into considerations having said that this is the prototype so I am doing the score but the score is going to be based off of a combination of what I'm experiencing in hand and the notes that were left for me about what's going to be improved for me the ergos are comfortable as I mentioned earlier the lock bar access is good not great thumb stud action and thumb studs are excellent front flipper is okay but I'm thinking that once the detent is tuned up a little bit more that's going to feel a little bit better to use the jimping not great for the front flipper for me personally but it does have nice jimping when you're going to use it in the detailed work very smooth action Build quality is very nice. I love the theme. That goes a long way for me. And I think that looks wise when you take into account the theme that goes behind this. Plus, I think it's just a good looking subdued gents type EDC that can flex into a little bit of hard use stuff. You know, not on the regular hard use, but would be able to cover some of your needs if you needed to push it hard a little bit. Having said that, what is my score on this one? To me, it is a 7.8. Very strong score coming out of the gate. That is a very high score on this channel. I know that I'm just introducing it, but I'm 
The mindset for me is when you get up over eight, you're talking about perfection and approaching perfection. It's going to be really hard for knives to get that type of score and budget knives are going to be really hard to get up over seven because of materials involved. Here you got a very exciting steel coming at production and that'll be Vanek super clean and you got titanium with inlays which I think are really exciting and you got a very unique premise here for the design idea behind this particular knife. So uh, 7.7 .7 is the score on this one. Very solid score. I'm very excited about getting my actual production version and I'll revisit everything here because I'll, I'll be able to cut with it. Um, ease of maintenance is going to be something else that takes into consideration so I can't quite cover that here that could pull the score up or down depending on how that goes when I actually get to that particular point but let me know what you think about the RR3 did you pre-order one are you going to pick one up after this review do you have any of the other nice standard models out there let me know in the comments down below I appreciate you hanging out to this point hit that like on your way out and the links are down below for you if you want to do any shopping through those link it helps the channel but if you don't no big deal i love you guys special thanks to the channel members out there i hope all of you have a fantastic week guys i'll catch you on the next one peace